This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. Support for this podcast comes from Wise, the account that lets you send, spend and receive money internationally. 50 currencies, 170 countries, one account designed to take on the world. So whether you're taking on Rio or Rome, Miami or Mumbai, you'll always get the mid-market exchange rate when you convert currencies with no markups and no hidden fees. Join 15 million people and businesses who are going global with WISE. Learn how the WISE account could work for you by downloading the app or visiting wise.com slash bbc. In 2012, a new charity bursts onto the scene. It's called Believe in Magic and it grants wishes to seriously ill children. It has the support of the biggest boy band in the world, One Direction. It's run by an inspirational 16-year-old girl called Megan Bari, who herself is battling a brain tumour. I've been in and out of hospital and seen so many other very poorly children. But when questions arise about her story, they reveal she could be facing another very different danger. What is this girl going through? It wasn't supposed to end like this. Listen to Believe in Magic with me, Jamie Bartlett. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hi, my name's Greg Jenner. For the past decade, I've been making history funny for kids on the BBC's award-winning Horrible Histories. And now I'd like to do it for you. You're Dead to Me is a new history podcast for people who don't like history, or at least people who forgot to learn any at school. In each of our episodes, I'm joined by a top-notch comedian and an expert historian to rummage through the most fascinating things that you should know about the global past. You know, you've got a law here saying witches can do things with this power of theirs. They can kill, they can harm. Was there some way that women were becoming more powerful that that made that patriarchal society panic? She should be a historian. It's brilliant. (laughs) This is certainly a period in which the patriarchy is becoming yeah. very anxious. There used to be a village yeah. and there was a pig's bladder. It's always a pig's bladder. Yeah. And every like May, I don't know, bank holiday, a pig's bladder gets thrown into the town centre. Did you see like, literally like all the town square? And one half of the village wrestle for it against the other half of the village. <laughs> and it's like, and then football was born. <laughs> I think that was enough for me. I was kind of like, oh yeah, pig's bladder and the town square. <laughs> and, and like, as like a nine year old, you'd be like, and that makes sense. And then that's kind of where my brain stopped. And then suddenly it's Italian 90. You gotta go, you know, you gotta go, the pig's bladder, we win the World Cup in 66, and then it's Italian 90. Okay, let's go. You missed a few steps there, but it's not bad. It's not a bad start. She had several tactics employed. So she would deploy disguises and. Uh... <laughs> yes, I just like, I thought of a bunch of slaves wearing monocles and the mustaches. Like, Good oh, day to you, sir. I'm yeah. the well, there the are opera. some reports that she would, you know, because she was known to be literate, pretend to read to mm. kind of obscure her face wow. or uh, things like that. But on one instance, she was in a market and was in close proximity, about to come into contact with one of her former masters. And so she kind of launches a chicken out yes. and pretends to follow it, causing like this big ruckus. Um, and he never gets a chance to, to see her. And okay. so she's able to kind of make a, a clean getaway. Spartans, when we see <laughs> them in the movie, they're in their pants. Yes. That doesn't sound very sensible. Is that a Hollywood thing? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Gerald Butler in those little leather nappy things that he has on. That's totally, totally Hollywood made up. So what did they wear? They wore the same kind of armour as pretty much every other Greek okay. kind of fighting force. So they'd have like, they'd have a breastplate and they'd have a helmet and they'd have greaves on their knees. And they would have that long red cape that mm-hmm. you mentioned yeah. earlier, Greg, like kind of that was supposedly red so that if they were bleeding, no one would see their blood because they just think it was the red cape. To fill in the blanks in your historical memory banks, subscribe to You're Dead to Me on BBC Sounds. Support for this podcast comes from WISE, the account that lets you send, spend, and receive money internationally. 50 currencies, 170 countries, one account designed to take on the world. So whether you're taking on Rio or Rome, Miami or Mumbai, you'll always get the mid-market exchange rate when you convert currencies with no markups and no hidden fees. Join 15 million people and businesses who are going global with WISE. Learn how the WISE account could work for you by downloading the app or visiting wise.com slash bbc. In 2012, a new charity bursts onto the scene. 
It's called Believe in Magic, and it grants wishes to seriously ill children. It's run by an inspirational 16-year-old girl called Megan Bari. Just wanted to give them the magical experiences back. It has the support of the biggest boy band in the world, One Direction. Believe in Magic quickly becomes a household name in the child cancer community, putting on parties, sending thoughtful gifts, even organising trips to Disney. Every single child there felt like they were so important and they, they weren't poorly, they weren't in a hospital. It was out of this world. Megan is adored by all those she helps. She had more sympathy and love for people than I'd ever met anybody before. Because she herself is extremely unwell with a life-threatening brain tumour. Her handbag was so heavy, none of us could ever carry it, and it was full of medicine. When something doesn't add up about Megan's story, a small group of parents start to question whether Meg is really ill. I'd call it a witch hunt kind of thing, asking questions like, which hospital are you in? They know that they're not being honest about her illnesses. We collectively said, we won't let it drop, we'll find out this time. But is Megan actually facing a very different danger? It's just awful. It's really not nice listening to that, was it? What is this girl going through? I'm Jamie Bartlett, a journalist and author, and together with the producer Ruth, we've spent the last year trying to get to the bottom of what really happened to Megan Barry and her charity, Believe in Magic. I cannot for the life of me understand why you've done what you've done to us. It takes us on a journey far stranger. I just saw a Mercedes when I thought it was it. That's not her car. It's not her car, is it? And far darker than we ever expected. I know what the truth is. I've read the records and they just come in and lie to me. It wasn't supposed to end like this. Listen to Believe in Magic. Believe in Magic.